the second part of our celebration of the Spanish for Whaler. This episode we will be sharing with you two pieces by another distinguished composer of the instrument, Alonso Madara. This week I've had the delight of talking to Jacob Fulford, a second year classical guitarist studying at the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire. He will be sharing with us a very special fantasia, perhaps one of the best known works by Madara. Alonso Madara was a Spanish priest. He was born around about 1510 and died in 1580. He's thought of as an innovative composer and his works can be found in three collections of books called Tres Libros de Musica in Cifras para Vuela, published in 1546 in Seville. Little is known of the man himself other than there is documentation that points towards a trip he made to Italy in the service of Charles V of Spain returning to Seville in 1546, where he receives the post of canon at Seville Cathedral, remaining in this post until his death. Tres Libros is predominantly a collection of Abuela music, but it holds a significant place in history as it contains the earliest known surviving music for the four-course Renaissance guitar, not to mention the harp and the organ. The Renaissance guitar, I'll come to in a minute, I just want to touch upon the historical significance of the harp in the 1500s as this instrument underwent a transformation with the introduction of chromatic notes. The instrument became known as la arpa di dos ordenes, or the harp of two orders, meaning there were now a development of two rows of strings on this instrument, the diatonic row, the white notes on the keyboard, and the chromatic row, the black notes of the keyboard. The pieces contained in Tres Libros for harp and organ are the earliest known surviving for this combination. It's thought that they're in this collection as a sample in order to advertise the next book for publication. Um, this publication, as far as we know, was never published. We need to know a little bit about the harp in order to understand Jacob's Fantasia. Alonso Mondara wrote this Fantasia for Fawela, but, interestingly, he writes a few notes alongside this piece. This was quite a rare occurrence in this repertoire. First comes in the title. Fantasia qui contrajese la harpa en la manera di Ludovico, which means Fantasia which imitates the harp in the manner of Ludovico. Ludovico I'll come to in a minute. Madara writes a note at the beginning of the Fantasia saying it is difficult until properly understood, an unusual thing for a composer to write. Then towards the end he writes, From here on to the end there are some false notes. Played well, they do not sound bad. Now back to Ludovico. So this Fantasia imitates the harp in the manner of Ludovico. Ludovico was a well-known harp player of the time. He worked in the court of King Ferdinand V of Aragon, roughly around about 1480 to 1510. And he was known as Ludovico e dell'arte, Ludovico of the harp. And he was really well known for being able to play chromatic notes on a single rank harp. This explains Madara's notes in this Fantasia when he writes, it is difficult until properly understood. He's making references to these chromatic notes and also his uh, reference at the end when he says there are false notes if played well sound good. So Madara is pushing the boundaries of innovation, adding chromaticism, adding syncopation into this quite remarkable fantasia, turning it into something that to our ears sounds really quite contemporary, all inspired by Ludovico, one of the greatest harp players of the 15th century. So turning to the Renaissance guitar, um, this was a popular instrument in Spain in the 1500s um, alongside the fuela, the harp and the keyboard. And Tres Libros is important because it is the earliest surviving music known to us for this little instrument. It has four sets of strings, it's smaller than the Fawela, as you can see, and it has a couple of tuning systems specifically for the 
instrument and the repertoire. In the book Tres Libros, um, there is a piece called O Guardame Las Vacas. It's a Romanesca, um, which is like a ground bass, a repeated sequence, and it translates as Guard for me the cows. music represents innovation and he was a man devoted to the arts. He died in April 1580 in Seville. During his lifetime he'd accumulated a small fortune. Upon his death in his will he'd instructed that this wealth be distributed amongst the poor in the city. Hi Jacob, welcome to the Priory Alley Music Series. <laughs> Hi Liz, thank you for having me. How's it all going in lockdown? Are you okay? Are you doing lots of playing? Uh, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Doing a lot of playing, a lot of recording, uh, a lot of practice. Tell us uh, a little bit about your interest in the early repertoire, because last year you performed with us in the Priory Early Music Series as um, part of our Strings Old and New concert, and you were mm -hmm. one of the group who was supposed to do our um, Dances of Terpsichore this year, which couldn't happen. Um, but you've got quite a, a passion and an interest in this early repertoire. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So it's actually a fairly uh, recent kind of interest, um, definitely within the past three years or so, because uh, when I was younger, I did listen to some Baroque music, some Vivaldi, some Bach, but uh, mainly I think it was one of your talks. So I came to the Conservatoire Open Day yes. um, in, I think, 2017, and oh. you had this... Uh, but this lutes and these other instruments and you're giving out these transcriptions and like tablature <laughs> and uh, I just found it super interesting and oh, I, I kind oh. of just, yeah <laughs> and then of course I came to the conservatoire yeah yeah and um I came to the conservatoire joined your classes and um there's just so much repertoire I didn't know about so. yeah yeah it, it is I mean once you start sort of peeling away the surfaces you realize oh, there's another world <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice. So um, uh, you're playing for us a little bit of Alonso Madara and for those folks who are watching this um, may not have heard of this very particular composer. He's quite innovative in his day wasn't he? He was, he was a well established composer and um, you're playing for us a very special Fantasia which is part of the actual classical guitar repertoire isn't it? It's quite well known in the, in the sort of guitar uh, community, yeah. this amazing Fantasia. Um, can you tell us um, a little bit about what uh, strikes you about this piece? What draws you in when you're sort of getting to grips with um, learning this piece and getting it up to performance level? The thing that makes the piece so special, which is the uh, like chromaticism, the modality, the beautiful like, heart sonority. Yeah. Um, of the piece because even when you're just learning it you can hear it really clearly and it's um, just so fun to play. I've played it so many times and I'm not sick of it. <laughs> um, yeah. It is and, extraordinary. Yeah. And um, the actual title is, is quite a bit of a mouthful. It's Fantasia chi contrasa la harpa en la manera de Ludovico which means literally <laughs> Fantasia which um, imitates the manner of the harp of Ludovico, this amazing harp player who was in the court of um, Ferdinand V. So this is why we get all these amazing chromatic notes because he was, he was quite, um, you know, he was well known, one of the first chromatic harp players, I believe. And it becomes quite modern, this piece, doesn't it? 
Do you feel that when you're playing it? Um, definitely, yeah. I mean, something I have fun doing is uh, when I play it to friends or family, I kind of ask them, when do you think this was composed? And every single answer was after 1800. Definitely. It's really such a modern piece. <laughs> studying at the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire as a classical guitarist and um, you've got another two years to go so um, it's yep. you know, it's an exciting time for you because you can really sort of um, go down a, uh, your, your own path and of your interests and one of those is arranging Scarlatti sonatas for the guitar. Can you tell us a little bit about this project? Um, yeah so I was for my third year, I need to play some early works. And um, I kind of thought about moving away slightly from incredibly early repertoire into, uh, you know, 200 years on, say, or 100 years on. And I found Scarlatti and his Spanish influence, I found incredibly interesting. Again, he's very ahead of his time. And um, some of his harmonies and, you know, dissonances are really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I thought um, instead of kind of playing really popular works of his to arrange my own, um, yeah. What are, what are the problems that you've had to overcome in order to make make that music uh, accessible for the guitar so so it's playable? <laughs> um, definitely picking the right one. If there's if there's too many notes, I just can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Carefully picking keys and the style of the piece, yeah. um, and then just kind of trimming it down, I suppose, kind of cussing out notes in chords. And... There's quite a lot of um, really quite big decisions to be made, aren't there, when you're, when you're arranging something from another instrument and uh, you have mm. to quite pick your way carefully through the, through the material that you have in order to stay true to the original, don't you? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So um, you have this uh, amazing interest in the early repertoire and um, I've heard you play a lot of early lute repertoire on the guitar and, and for whaler mm -hmm. repertoire. Have you ever considered picking up the lute or the for whaler? Um, oh, if I could get my hands on every whaler, I'd love to. Oh. <laughs> I, I do own a lute. I just, just got a lute. Um, oh. But making it to trim my nails down. Yeah, it's yeah. real, really fun. But my lute technique is just not there. Ah, well, um, you know who to come to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely I will. Um, but kind of making the, the decision to trim off my nails as well is really uh, Isn't it, yeah. quite terrifying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There are com compromises you can do. The end, of, the end of the day, you do have to decide. It's quite a big decision. I remember making it. It really is. <laughs> One or the other. Yeah, it, it's quite a tough decision. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, we yeah, can. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jacob, it's been absolutely wonderful to have you on the show. And thank you so much for um, sharing with us this amazing Fanta Fantasia by Alonso Madara. And um, thank, thank you, you for having me. Thank you for in the Prior Reality Music Series. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Next time for our penultimate episode in the series, I'll be chatting to Carlos Labon Gadelia, a first year studying at the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire. He'll be treating us to some Baroque guitar music. So, until next time.